What's the dish Japanese of all ages love to eat? Curry with rice. On city streets in Japan, you'll see the signboards of curry shops everywhere. Sometimes even two right next door to each other. Curry evolved from Indian cuisine. It basically consists of stewed vegetables to which a mix of more than 30 spices is added. Indian curry is known for its smooth soup-like consistency. But Japanese curry is different. It's a thick stew packed with meat or seafood and vegetables. And there's a distinct way of eating Japanese curry with various Japanese extras such as pickles and raw egg. Curry with rice came to Japan in the late 19th century. Ever since, the Japanese have been inventing ways to make the dish easier to enjoy, from blocks of instant curry roux to pre-made curry in sealed bags. These days, curry is even providing sustenance for astronauts on their missions in space. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we look at one of Japan's favorite foods, curry, and the secret of its popularity. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Our theme for today is curry, or I should say kare, because nobody quite knows why, but in Japan, the term has morphed from curry to kare. Not only that, but the Japanese actually call it kare rice, which is curry and rice. I suppose Japanese people can't conceive of curry without the rice that comes with it. Either way, it's one of the most popular types of food in this country. I'm standing in front of a curry restaurant, which is part of a chain. It's located in an extremely busy commercial area, which is full of both students and office workers. Now, the system here is you buy a ticket from this machine with uh, your choice of food. The menu is here down on the left. You can have your curry with, uh, or you can have pork cutlet, chicken cutlet, wiener sausages, fried shrimps, or all of the above. So, um, pork cutlet is one of a favorite, one of my favorites, but I'm actually going to go for chicken cutlet today. Okay. And my ticket should appear. Oh no, I have to press the thing. Hang on. There we go. Okay, while I'm waiting for my curry, let's get an introductory course on curry in Japan. We're going to meet the Chibas, a typical Japanese family who live in Saitama Prefecture next to Tokyo. At the end of a long and busy day, Yumiko, a full-time homemaker, is making curry with rice for dinner. Curry is a classic, easy, home-cooked meal in Japan. Japanese curry with rice is distinguished by the many ingredients that go into the stew. Onion, carrot and potato are absolute essentials. In this family, the carrots are sliced thin because the daughter isn't fond of them. The potatoes are usually put in as big, easily identifiable chunks. As they stew in the curry, they lend it sweetness. All sorts of meat can go into curry. Beef, pork, chicken. Today, Yumiko is making pork curry. First, she sautés the pork and some garlic in butter. Once the meat is partially cooked, water is added. And then chopped vegetables. The whole thing is left to simmer. In Japan, curry is stewed for a long time. My children love it, so I make it once a week. After simmering for 15 minutes, the vegetables have softened. The time has come to add the instant curry roux. This food product was invented in Japan. The roux comes in the form of solid chunks composed of vegetables, spices and wheat flour. They eliminate the need to mix spices from scratch. Curry roux is available in stores across Japan. A vast range of products offer many different flavors and degrees of spiciness. 
They make it possible to replicate the curry dishes you'd find in restaurants right at home. At 5 p.m., the family's daughter, Azusa, arrives home from school. The delicious aroma of curry already fills the house. Azusa absolutely loves curry. And her father, Yasuhiro, who runs a carpentry firm, hurries home from work when curry's on the menu. The curry pot has been simmering on low heat for an hour. It's finally time for the last touch of flavor. This family's secret ingredient is ketchup. Five years ago, they first tried adding it to the mix, and Azusa enjoyed the curry even more. Now it's the established family recipe. Worcestershire sauce, too, for added depth in flavor. Finally, Yumiko adds fresh cream, and the curry is ready to eat. Other families have their own secret ingredients. Yogurt, chocolate, even instant coffee. Once the curry is ready, it's ladled out beside freshly cooked rice. Piping hot, short-grained rice and spicy, aromatic curry. It's an irresistible combination at any time of year. Okay, everyone, let's eat. Here's one way to eat curry with rice in Japan. They use a spoon that's standing in a glass of ice-cold water. This is a special approach unique to curry. The wet spoon prevents the rice from sticking. And when it's chilled, it feels good in the mouth against the spicy heat of the curry. Spoonful by spoonful, the family digs in with gusto. More so on curry night than other days of the week. Mum makes the best curry. When I come home from school, open the door and smell the curry, I think, yeah, it's curry night. In the centre of the table are the condiments curry is eaten with. The red things are fukujinzuke. Finely chopped mixed vegetables, including daikon radish and aubergine, that have been pickled in soy sauce, sugar and sweet rice wine. The mildly sweet flavour is a match made in heaven with curry. Another popular condiment is rakyo, shallots pickled in sweet vinegar. Father Yasuhiro garnishes his curry with a raw egg and soy sauce. He mixes them with the curry as he eats. This reduces the spiciness and gives the dish a milder flavor. One of the things people love about eating curry with rice is that it allows each person to customize the dish with his or her choice of extra items. If we went over to a neighbor's house and tried their curry, it would have its own taste. Curry is very much a family flavor. I suppose everybody always has onions, carrots and potatoes in the kitchen. So, every homemaker turns to curry when she's in a spot for a meal. It's said that on average Japanese families eat curry with rice four times a month. It's one of Japan's staples of home cooking. Here's your curry with rice and chicken cutlet. Thank you. Look at that, looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, they give you a bottle of Worcester sauce here that you can put on top of the chicken cutlet if you want to. I actually prefer not to do that. I put the curry directly on. You'd think that if you put the curry sauce on the, the meat, it's going to make it all soggy. But in fact, it doesn't because the consistency of the Japanese curry is quite thick. I think that's why. Um, and you'll see that it maintains its crispness um, even though I'm doing this. Let's, let's have a try. Mm. That's great. 
The colour of this is very dark. You'd think it's going to be really, really spicy. It's actually not that spicy, kind of medium. Curry's been around in Japan for as long as I've been here, in fact, for much longer. But what I found out quite recently was that it originally came here from England. Let's go back in history now and see how it happened. This is the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force base in Yokosuka, not far from Tokyo. The roots of Japanese-style curry with rice can be found here. The JMSDF is the successor of the old Japanese Navy. At the mess hall on base, Friday lunch is always curry with rice. This tradition of ending the week with a meal of curry has prevailed for more than 100 years. Curry with rice was introduced to the Japanese Navy in the 1870s. The Japanese Navy was modeling itself on the British Navy at the time, and serving curry to sailors was part of the package. In those days, eating meat was still rare in Japan. So in order to help sailors beef up physically, curry was used to mask the smell of the meat and make it more palatable to the sailors. This is the cooking manual of the old Japanese Navy. The ingredients are stated clearly. Beef or chicken. Carrots, onions, potatoes must be used. It was here that the three essential vegetables for Japanese-style curry were established. In the early decades of the 20th century, curry with rice quickly spread from the Navy to the public at large. Japan had its own version of the Roaring Twenties. Cinema, music and dance halls were popular, and a middle class with a big appetite for various products was appearing in Japanese cities. Stylish men and women just loved the curry in restaurants serving Western-style food. A department store established in Osaka started selling affordable curry with rice as a loss leader. At a price half of what other restaurants were charging, more than 10,000 people per day flocked there to dine on curry. It was here that the association between curry and Japanese pickles was forged. Thanks to this store's promotional strategy, the navy curry that had once seemed out of reach of the public worked its way onto the menu of the masses. Yokosuka is still known for curry to this day. Around town, there are more than 20 shops that make navy curry one of their main attractions. This shop serves up a reconstructed recipe for navy curry dating back 100 years. The shop prides itself on making its own curry roux. First, flour is gently cooked in beef fat. To prevent it from burning, it's constantly stirred with a spatula. This laborious procedure takes over half an hour and is performed every morning. Unless you keep stirring it constantly, it will burn. It takes a while to get the hang of it. Once the mixture has turned thick, the curry powder is added. The roux made in this fashion is combined with the stew ingredients, and there you have it, the navy curry. In the old days, making curry was for professional cooks. It was too difficult for a typical family to make at home. But the 1950s saw the debut of a product that changed the history of Japanese curry, instant curry roux. The various curry roux made of wheat flour and curry powder that had been pre-cooked and pre-mixed were a breakthrough that allowed anyone to prepare curry. Using the roux improves the flavor. All you have to do is melt it into the stew. You can use as much or as little as you like. You can cope with a sudden increase in the number of people who will be eating it. Easy to use and versatile, curry roux was an instant hit. Within 10 years of the product's introduction, 
the volume of production was 20,000 tons a year. 20 years after that, it had quadrupled. Today, more than 100 curry roux products are on the market, from ones including honey, to appeal to kids, right through to gourmet curries. The Japanese market for curry roux is worth more than 80 billion yen per year. Now, Japanese curry roux is exported to China, South Korea, and other neighboring countries. Born in India, nurtured in Britain, and flourishing in Japan, curry has undergone a process of transformation and is now winging its way around the world. You may be wondering what sort of a place I'm in. It kind of looks like I'm visiting somebody's house, but in fact, this is a very small curry restaurant which is situated in an extremely quiet residential street. There's no sign outside. You wouldn't even know it was here unless you were looking for it. And the ambiance is, well, it's, it's almost like you've gone back in time about 50 years. It's wonderful. I love it. Now, the dish you see in front of me here may look a little unusual. It's a kind of curry that has been boiled down for quite a long time uh, to the point where it becomes like a, a fairly thick paste which is then laid over a bed of white rice. This is called in Japan dry curry. Now, the term dry curry is used for all kinds of things, usually either this kind of thing or um, a kind of fried rice which has been flavoured with uh, curry powder, but there are different varieties as well. Now, the dry curry here is a special dish that they only make five servings of a day, so I'm actually quite lucky to get one. Here you go. Hmm. This curry is really nice. I'm sure you could serve 50 servings a day if you wanted to. Why only make five? Well, actually, five servings are all we can possibly make in one day because it takes half a day to make the basic curry sauce and then another half day to boil it down. Wow, it takes that long. So at one end of the spectrum you have that kind of gourmet curry which takes time, effort and, of course, skill to make. And at the other end you have instant curry which is pre-packaged in individual packs and can be just heated up in a few minutes. Next, let's take a look at that. This food products manufacturer in Tokushima Prefecture was the first company in the world to succeed in producing instant curry packaged in retort pouches. The concept is curry like mum used to make. Piping hot curry with plenty of potato that's ready to eat in a jiffy, wherever and whenever you feel like it. This company was late getting into the curry making business. In order to pioneer a new market, it turned to the technology of retort sterilization that had just been developed in the US. Retort sterilization uses high temperatures and high pressure to kill off bacteria. Originally, this was used for canned or bottled food so that it would keep for a long time at room temperature. But the know-how to apply this technology to sterilize food in plastic pouches did not yet exist. The high pressure and high temperatures would cause the air inside the pouch to expand and rupture the pouch. For four years after development began, the company labored day after day to find the optimal temperature, pressure and time. If you were a little too late checking the pressure and it dropped, the pouch would burst open and the contents would spill out. The engineers who tackled that problem did excellent work. They had to figure the whole thing out from scratch, experimenting day after day. Then, in 1968, after years of trial and error, the company perfected a proprietary system. The product went on sale in limited release in the Kansai region in western Japan. This is an enamel signboard the company's salesmen used when visiting retailers at the time. The sales strategy was to associate a food of western origin, curry, with Japanese mum's home cooking. 
In our bags, we carried the enamel signboards, hammers and nails, and we'd ride around on the bus, visiting shops and asking the shop owners to put up our signs. The sales strategy was a great success. The image of curry and a woman in kimono became iconic across Japan. Five years after the product launch, the company sold 100 million packages in a one-year period. And today, the market for instant curry in retort pouches continues to expand. This is the grocery floor of a department store. There are more than 300 types of curry and retort pouches, including ones that aim to replicate the taste of dishes in famous restaurants, as well as ultra-premium products priced at up to 1,500 yen and featuring prime Japanese beef. Over the past few years, local curries made with regional specialities have become especially popular. This cherry curry hails from Yamagata in the northeast, famous for its excellent cherry orchards. Here's a white curry with scallops from the city of Hakodate on Japan's northern island of Hokkaido. And this curry from Tamba Sasayama in western Japan features premium soybeans. When my wife is away and I'm on my own, since I can't cook, I eat this stuff. It's easy, quick and tasty. And we prefer different types of curry. Over the past 10 years, output of curry in retort pouches has increased by more than 30%. These days, each member of a family can enjoy a different favorite flavor at the same meal. We have some items here which may look a little unusual to viewers outside Japan, but let me assure you that they will be eaten on a regular basis in just about any Japanese household. For a start here, we have curried noodles, noodles in a curry sauce. This is a curry donut, believe it or not. It's a savory donut with curry inside it. Let me just open it up to show you. That's what it looks like, and it's actually quite nice. You'll find those in any Japanese supermarket or con convenience store. Now we have an array here which is just a tiny fraction of the astounding number of curry flavored goods you'll find on the market in Japan. Prawn crackers with curried flavor, that's the first time I've seen those, but all kinds of different snacks over here as well. They even have a sauce which is used for putting on cold noodles in the summertime. That's how much the Japanese like their curry. And now there are even people who are touting the health effects of curry. Let's take a look. This is the health section of a major bookstore. Here, one word that stands out on a lot of covers and spines is curry. Some people are saying that curry can help to combat aging and promote weight loss. Professor Kazuho Abe of Musashino University believes that a substance found in curry is effective against Alzheimer's. Based on that, he has launched a drug development program in collaboration with the Salk Institute in the United States. Professor Abe has synthesized a compound called CNB001 from curcumin, a chemical found in curry powder. CNB001 enhances information transmission in the brain, boosting memory. CNB001 is a synthetic drug that is a slight modification of the molecular structure of curcumin. It's a fascinating substance that protects neurons in the brain and prevents the accumulation of the compounds that cause amyloid plaques, one of the hallmarks of Alzheimer's. It also boosts memory function. Because it can be administered orally, it's a promising drug candidate. Curry is also in the spotlight in the world of Chinese herbal medicine. Mune Tetsu Tei is a doctor of Chinese herbal medicine. He recommends eating curry with rice in the morning. Eating curry in the morning, the first thing you notice is that your blood circulation improves. In particular, 
there is a sharp rise in blood flow to the brain. And that effect sometimes continues for more than three hours. These benefits are available not just to the young, but to the elderly as well. People who are becoming forgetful and are concerned about cognitive impairment can benefit from these effects. Japanese curry has even gone to space. In 1992, Japanese astronaut Mamoru Mori took pouches of curry aboard the space shuttle. It proved popular with other astronauts from various countries who were tired of bland space foods and helped break the tension aboard the orbiting spacecraft. These days, Japanese curry is an officially recognized space food. It's believed that turmeric, an ingredient of curry, helps to protect cells from the oxidizing effects of space radiation. Recently, Japanese astronaut Soichi Noguchi spent five months aboard the International Space Station and he enjoyed Japanese curry during his stay up there. Curry has now become established as an essential food for helping astronauts to maintain their health in orbit. The idea of trying to eat curry in an environment with no gravity to hold it down seems a little intriguing to say the least. But apparently the American astronauts all enjoyed it as well. As we've seen on today's show, curry is probably the favorite food of most Japanese children. But even so, the Japanese don't regard it as being authentic Japanese cuisine. It's thought of as being a kind of Western food. There's an expression in Japanese, wayosechu, which means a kind of an amalgam of Japanese and Western culture. The Japanese often take imported things from the West and then put their own spin on them. Sometimes it goes really well, sometimes perhaps not quite so well. But in the case of curry, I think we can all safely give it a two thumbs up. I'll see you again next time. <laughs>